that we're racist. We ain't racist. The reason why they hate us so much is because they destroyed black people as a human reality. And they thought it was over. They thought they'd gotten away with it. But now we come now to remind them of history. And they don't want to be reminded of that history. But we have to remind them because we know if we don't, history will repeat itself. It's already begun in America and it's happening here right now. History is repeating itself. They've now got the black man breaking stones again. In chains now, on chain gangs. This is what's happening right now. They're planning now to privatize all the jails here. And they're going to put you to work, black man, for no pay on a plantation. You're going back into slavery. Praise be to Allah. They have no use for black men now. We are now classified as an underclass. Not even class. Classless. And that means that we're flotsam. That means that we are to be jettisoned. That means when the ship is going down, you throw off anything which is not necessary on the ship to keep it floating. The white man's world is going down and out. And he's now looking at flotsam. He's now looking to get rid of dead weight. He's now looking to get rid of people who ain't productive, ain't saying nothing. Wake up, black man. Bob Marley said, the biggest man you ever did see was once a baby. You know what that means? That means you've got to get off this big chest business, brothers. Once upon a time, you were a little tiny baby, just like anybody else. Doodling up yourself, having your nappy changed, screaming and crying. The biggest man in here. The biggest, toughest, hardest man in here. I don't care if you've got some shotgun buried in your back garden. I'm not impressed. Baby. Not only baby then, but baby now. Baby now. A baby who, you know, sisters, you got some of these men in your homes. You know what they're like. When they're out of the, out of the public eye. And they're kind of soft. And you see your man, the big man who everybody fear upon the street. And he just, boy, and you see him looking confused sometimes in the house. You see him there and you know that he don't know. You know that he doesn't know whether he's coming or going. And then the doorbell rings and it's one of them friends and them switch. Hey, where I say, you all right? Where where I go tonight? Shut up, girl. Shut up. Hold him out, man. Shut up. You know, it's a big man at all. But a moment ago, he wasn't like that. You know, brothers and sisters, our fathers, some of them are generals in the house. General in the house. Sit down and shut him out. Put on the TV. He's reading the paper. He's going watch the TV at the same time. Don't turn it over. You can't see me. I watch it. Get me, get me food, wife. And then the white man comes for the insurance. <laughs> Would you like a cup of tea? Come in. And you, you're shocked. You're looking at your dad. You're saying, but wait a minute. That's the general. All of a sudden, him turning into a chimp. Because the white man has come calling. Very, very, very deep, brothers and sisters. Beloved. Let's move on. Now what they're saying is that the law enforcement agencies around the world, they're saying that Jamaican criminals are the most violent on the planet. They're saying that there's something vicious, uniquely vicious and chilling about the Jamaican criminal coming out of the island of Jamaica in the Caribbean. They're saying like he's unlike any other criminal. Now, when we hear that, brothers, some of us fall right into the trap. Hey, yes, I mean, hey, I mean that tonight. Big mistake, brothers. Big mistake, brother. You know that, you know they say, praise be to Allah. You know they say flattery will get you everywhere. Boost up your ego. Big me up. That's what they call the, 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 the passage. Big me up. When you walk into the dance and you're the don in the area, a man say, yeah, big up such and such a man at a house tonight. And you just want to lord it over all your brothers and sisters, believing the hype, not realizing that you're being set up. Brothers, 
<laughs> I want to give you the modern root of this warfare that we face today. The modern root of this began, brothers, on what they call Jamaican independence, 1962. There's a more historical root coming from slavery. That is another level of a root. But in 1962, just before 1962, what you had was a situation where Khrushchev and Kennedy, the leader of Russia and the leader of America, came together in a near miss of a third world war over what they called the crisis of the Bay of Pigs in Cuba, where the Russians had put some missiles in Cuba and America said, get them out or we go to war. And there was a standoff. 90 miles down the road, you have the island of Jamaica. All of a sudden now taking on great political and strategic significance. And what happened thereafter was that Siega came and Manly came. And these two brothers, <laughs> brothers, set up PMP and JLP. One backed by CIA, the other backed by Russia, KGB. And what they did was they wanted to control Jamaica. One wanted it to be capitalist, the other wanted it to be communist. Because they were worried now that the whole of the Caribbean, because the only island down there bigger than Jamaica is Cuba, and the Russians already moved into Cuba with nuclear uh, warheads, and the Americans managed to bluff them and tell them, get out of there, otherwise we go to war. But once that was secured, then both of them now went to war over Jamaica. Brothers and sisters, up until that point, black people in Jamaica, we'd have a couple of fist fights. Every now and then, man would get rank and get all the machete. Because we used to drink that rum, you know, and the rum in the heat sometimes would just turn kind of full. But other than that, there was no too, too big thing going down. But all of a sudden, the CIA, guns. KGB, guns. And they started coming in. Brothers and sisters, they went to work. The system they created is a simple system. It's called divide and rule. They introduced so-called British-style politics into Jamaica. Now, you know, brothers and sisters, when election time comes around here, all you see is a bunch of white people on the TV talking foolishness. Here, here, here. Withdraw. Would the right honorable gentleman sit down? That's as rank as it gets. We take the same system and lose our minds. Black people start killing one another not? over who's left wing and who's right wing. They put the guns into the black community and they use these young brothers. And by the way, at that time, most of our parents had left Jamaica and the Caribbean to come here to do the work of building up the country after the war. These were the so-called immigrants who came over in the 50s. They came over here now to do the work that the white people didn't want to do. So they left me, because I was one of them. They left you back in Jamaica without any parental guidance. They just wanted a better life. Remember what I said about black people wanting something? That's why we're like nomads. How many of you in this room tonight live in Brixton? Can I see a show of hands? How many of you live in Brixton? See that? See that? Everybody is from somewhere else. We're nomadic people. We're traveling. We're just moving. Very few of us, you find where we are, belong there or originate there. We're just moving all around. So we came here and we left our children there to grow up with our uncles and aunties and whatever. And, by the way, how many of you, some of you may have heard about a politician dying in Jamaica the other day, Arthur Jones. He was the, he was the longest serving MP in Jamaican politics, Jamaican history. That was my uncle. That's the brother who grew me while my parents came here. That's the man I stayed with. There's a deeper story behind that. If I get the opportunity one day, I'd like to tell you something about that, something about my background. But let me say this to you, brothers and sisters. We, our parents came here, and they left us there. And we went haywire. And we, the young brothers and sisters, they came and they gave us the guns. 
and we now went to war with one another over politics that we didn't even understand. And what the politicians offered us, those corrupt politicians who took the white man's bait, hook, line, and sinker, was they offered us little trinkets. You know, down in Jamaica now, they've got places like um, Tivoli Gardens. Tivoli Gardens comes out of that campaign where they built that housing estate because of politics. They built up, the PMP would build one, then the JLP would build another. And we would go to fighting over the turf. And we would be trying to do favors to the politicians to get a nice flat or a nice home. Oh, beloved brothers and sisters. You know, there's another place called Arnett Gardens. What they call, they call it Concrete Jungle. This is like the, the two rival places, Tivoli Gardens and Arnett Gardens are Concrete Jungle. And we went to killing and fighting and you'd see the writing on the wall, GLP stay or you're dead. PMP still will tell you're dead and people would die, lose their lives over foolishness and nonsense because of wise men using black people against black people. And brothers and sisters, we never benefit one iota from none of it. But this is how the whole thing began. And then in downtown Kingston now, we developed what they call literally garrisons. You had garrisons, like soldiers. Young youth on the street, them just armed to the teeth. And they, all of these guns have been given to them. And they've got garrisons. And over the garrison, you've got the local Don. Don. And the word Don comes from the mafia films. Or, and the Don has underneath him a posse. And the posse comes from the spaghetti westerns. Because as black people, you've got to understand something about your blackness. Because you're black, because you've got menelin. You got this chemical which gives you the blackness, gives you your rhythm, gives you your harmony. This is something that white people wish they could have and they haven't got. You, you don't understand why white people hate your guts. You think they hate you because they really think you're inferior. No, 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 no. You don't come for an inferior man, one man with 25 police. You don't do that. The reason you bring 25 is because you know there's something with that man. See, but the reason that they're so crazy and hateful of you is because they envy Something you got that they can never have. And that's called menelin. But this menelin, praise be to Allah, but this menelin, it is an absorber of energy. This menelin, it makes the black man and woman like a battery. You're like a battery. Whatever you take in through your eyes, whatever you hear, it becomes a part of you. That's why you've got to be very careful what you take in. Whatever you expose yourself to becomes a part of you. So you got black men. Who would watch a spaghetti western? And before you know it, them walk like the star. They can draw their gun like the star. They change their name. Josie Wales Maneel. Clint Eastwood Maneel. Dillinger Maneel. If they watch a gangster film, a Scarface Maneel. They become the thing. And so, posse comes up. Don comes up. Yeah, man, in, in Brixton. We had a Don of Brixton here, sir. I my turf this. That's the kind of language that we use. And we go to killing each other over some madness, some foolishness, which was fed to us. Because they know about you, they know about your nature that you don't know about yourself. And it's pure mockery. So, next, the, the Jamaican government got desperate. So they bring in gun court to the point where if you got just some bullet, you can get life. That doesn't work. You got man lock up in there like it's going out of fashion, man still killing. Man still carrying gun. Man still shooting. Because the politicians and those who are using the bribery of a flat or the bribery of some money or the bribery of a car and prestige or whatever, they just feeding these brothers who uh, they're naked and out of doors. The brothers ain't got nothing. The brothers are being kept starved and hungry. So any little kind of leeway that they can see that they can make they snap at it and they're willing to go and kill their own people to benefit these blood suckers of the poor people brothers and sisters we're coming towards the end I want to say to you in Jamaica we've got places like the McIntyre housing estate you heard about that the name of the place changed this is in Brownstown right I know that my brother was born down there where am they? brother Clifton Brownstown, them kind of here, Manchester on them side. The name of the place changed to Dunkirk. Because of the 
kind of killing that was going on down there. It's like a war zone. You got a place called Smith Lane. That place became known as Tel Aviv. Because the killing was so terrible down there, they had to akin it to the war zone of Tel Aviv. You got another place called Duhaney Park. That place became known as Angola. This is, this is where we're coming out of, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, we've been set up. As a people, you in this room, I'm talking to every man, woman and child. Brothers, I don't care how bad you think you are. I don't care how many guns you got. I'm telling you, black man, you are righteous by nature. Your very nature is God. Your nature is God. But a wicked, psychopathic enemy has been bringing you and I up for the last 400 years. And he hates us. And he has been manipulating us in such a way that today you and I are now acting 100% against our very nature. But even when you were a little baby, you knew the difference between right and wrong. Even now, black man, and I'm talking about the bad black man in the room. Sometimes when you tell a lie, even now, you get sweaty. Sometimes you just lie and you just feel yourself just sweaty, chop. You just feel uncomfortable. Because your nature, you know, don't matter how good a liar you are, you can stay out here tonight and tell me a whole heap of lie. Boy, Leo, you want to see me do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. But when you go home and you look in the mirror, you know you're looking at a liar. You know it. That is the nature of the black man and woman. And these people, brothers, they have really destroyed you and I. To the point now where literally to the civilized world. And when I say civilized world, don't make no mistake and start thinking Prince Charles and Lady Diana. These are not civilized people. You don't see the civilized people. They constitute about 5% of the world's population. You really don't see them. They're in every country on the planet, but they're very small minority. They're very quiet people. But to those civilized people, we today, hear me well, we are classified as animals. We are classified as beasts. We have been made subhuman. We've got to, the, got to the stage now where we feed on each other like beasts. We don't pray for one another. We pray on each other. This is now such a dangerous time in the black community. We're about ready to be taken out. Because we've been set up now. But brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, we can turn this thing around. We can turn this thing around. Praise be to Allah. We can turn this thing around. Let's get to the solution, brothers and sisters. You see, if you don't know something, you can't change it. If you don't know what's going on, you can't change it, man. Brothers and sisters, you've got to understand, man, you've been denied your history. You've been denied your culture. You've been denied your language. We come in here and say, Assalamu alaikum to you. You start skinning up your face. Where am I talking foreign language to me for? It's your language. Your name is not Smith. It's not Jones. It's not Robinson. It's not Brown. It's not Green. It's not Hogg. That's not your name, black man. That name was given to us by the slave master. The name Jones means that the slave master was a Welsh man who came from Wales. And he gave his slaves his name. And sisters, when you divorce a man, you must give up his name. You don't keep the name. You go back to your maiden name. That's how you are divorced. When a baby is born from a woman, the cord must be cut. So that the baby is independent of the parent. If the cord remains intact, both baby and mother will die. They said that you and I became independent in 62, in Jamaica, in the rest of the Caribbean and Africa. Where is our independence? If when you go down to Jamaica today, you see black people in parliament wearing wigs, looking like white people. Trying to talk like white people. 
if when you go into the school system down there and the children take an examination, they've got to send it here to be marked by white people. Where is the independence? There ain't no independence. We're still dependent on the slave master. And as far as he's concerned, we are still his slaves. It, it really grieves me and hurts me when I hear black people, when I see black people going out to white people talking about no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. When I see us going out to white people and saying, give us justice. When I see us going to white people and saying, don't kill us anymore. Why did you kill my brother like that? Why did you hit my sister in the head like that? Why did you, you're appealing to somebody who doesn't even begin to understand your appeal. They don't understand what you're talking about. They don't understand it. You're talking to them and you're thinking, you're talking to another human being. As far as you're concerned, they're just like you. No, they're not. No, they're not. They don't think like you. But they're looking at you and they're looking at you strange like, what's the matter with you people? Can't you see that we hate your guts? It's like a woman who is being abused constantly by a man. And all your friends say to your sister, leave him. And then you, but me love him. Him only kick me up every three weeks. Him only burn me with a cigarette now and then. Him only cut me in my face a couple times and pour acid on my back once. No, he don't love you. Someone who will not treat you right, will not teach you right, cannot love you. When you are being abused, you must divorce. There must be a separation. Only when you want to separate, you see them come running now. Oh, we're all brothers. We can get on. They love you to be under their foot getting abused, begging them for mercy and they know that they ain't got no mercy in them to give you. That's why they deny your suffering. You, in your face, they kill the brother and they say, yeah, we didn't do nothing. They can kill Joy Gardner in front of her child. 13 foot of tape around the black woman's head and tell the whole world nobody did nothing wrong. It's a different thinking. beat Rodney King in front of the whole world. Any civilized person watching that said, what am I trying to kill the man? They wouldn't even charge them with attempted murder. And the little silly charge they charged him with, then they said, not guilty. Because it's a different mentality. It's a different soul. It's a different person. It's a different conscience. It's a different nature. And brothers and sisters, as I close, I want you to understand that when you can take a whole people, a whole people, into slavery, slavery, that which you and I, our ancestors, went through. Brothers and sisters, do you remember when you used to watch Roots on the television? Can you remember, brothers and sisters, talk back to me. Do you remember Roots? Beloved, I used to watch Roots. And you know, when we see our mothers and fathers talking to the television, how we look at them and we laugh. You know what your mother, when you see your mother watching a film, and she says, look out, look out, they're behind you. Watch out. Watch out, watch out. He's, watch out, watch out. And he say, look, mom, mom, it's just a film. And she says, shut your mouth. You can't see the man, I'm going to get killed. When I watched Roots, I found myself doing the exact same thing. I would see the slave master sleeping. And I would see the black slave with a machete. And I said, kill him, no. Kill him, no. No, no, he's a chance. Kill him, no. I'd be in my living room getting hot. That's right. I couldn't understand. I couldn't understand. I'm saying to myself, how did black people put up with this? And you know, brothers, when we watched it, we would be, we, we would, we'd get, we'd get, hey, 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 you see me? You see if me was a slave, boy? You know, we start thinking what we would have done. Our brothers thought about all of that and then some. But they couldn't do nothing at the time because they were under some serious business. We get upset over Roots. Roots. But I'm telling you, when I used to watch Roots and I'd go out in the street the day after, I would just pray that no white person even talk to me. Don't even talk to me. Don't make the mistake. If you're the bus conductor, don't make the mistake of asking me for no fear. Don't.
don't ask me. Like London Underground, like you there, you're just a while, we are, we are, that's gone. I'm not paying. But, brothers and sisters, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says to us, he says, if the truth of the black people suffering in the Western Hemisphere was to be really told, it would make a brass monkey shed tears. A statue made of brass would cry. If you really knew what happened to us in slavery. We really don't understand. Brothers and sisters, Roots was a Hollywood depiction. Roots was made for family, prime time viewing. And that nearly killed us. What if you could see the real thing? You really don't understand what they've done to black people. And today you and I are still suffering the legacy. Let me show you what kind of race we're in. We're in a race where a man has amputated both our legs. And the man is not running, he's driving a Ferrari. And he's telling us, let's go now for the race. You ain't got no legs, he's got a Ferrari. That's the kind of race we're in. And brothers and sisters, he didn't bring us into the Western Hemisphere to make us his brothers. He didn't bring us here to make us his lovers. He didn't bring us here to have us be his equal. He brought us here to build his world and then to destroy us. We were supposed to die in slavery. You don't understand that. One of the things that upsets white people, the powers, I mean the really wise ones, every time they see you, they're in shock. They're saying, what do we have to do to get rid of them? They can't understand how you're still here. They can't understand it. Everywhere you look, especially in the summertime, all you see is black youth, black youth. You don't see no white youth. They're getting older and older, grayer and grayer. Their wombs are drying up. We've got children of 12 and 10 years old having babies today. Children having babies in the black community. But in the black world, with the black woman, the brown woman, the yellow woman and the red woman, they're pushing contraceptives. No plant. They're encouraging you to get sterilized. They're telling you to keep the population down. Don't have babies because there's a population explosion. There's not enough food to feed the people. But at the same time, white women, frozen embryos, in vitro fertilization, every device under the sun. They're now dragging white women of 60 and 70 years old out of the cupboard. To put hormones in them to make them have babies six at a time. Wake up, black man and woman. Wake up. Praise be to Allah. Wake up, brothers and sisters. This is real. This is serious. You are the most awesome generation that has ever been produced. I'm talking now specifically to you young brothers. You are warriors. God brought you onto the planet at this time. This is the time that all of our ancient ancestors dreamt that they could live in. This is the time of our liberation. This is the time when black people are to go free. But the only way you can go free today, brothers and sisters, is that we have got to stand up now on knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Put away the foolishness. Put away the drugs. Put away the guns. They are somebody else's weapons. Don't be using this in the black community. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Put it away, brothers and sisters. Put it away, brothers. You see, Saddam Hussein got all his guns from the West. But what they didn't tell Saddam is that they gave Saddam a dud scud. A dud scud. They gave Saddam stupid guns. Hear me well. Brother, that Luger that you got at home, you aim it at your brother, you kill a baby over there. It's defective. That shotgun you got, you fire it, it blow up in your face. You got some little pop gun, some little defective gun, some foolishness. Even the Uzi that you got now, it ain't going to save you. It is a toy compared to what the white man has got in store for you. He wants to give you a false sense of security with your little pop gun. Because brothers, when the helicopter gunship comes down the street, it is all over. 
That don't just cut people in half, it cuts buildings in half. The white man has got some tools lined up for you, black man. He will make you to know who is bad, who is a killer. Black man, you are a baby killer compared to this white man. There ain't no killer on this planet like the white man. He is the most evil killer you will ever meet. I heard my little brothers, praise be to Allah. I heard my little brother the other day, one of these little hip-hop brothers, you know, outside um, a Westwood um, dance, getting upset with the police. He's telling me that he's willing to die to go into the dance. I said, brother, go home. Oh, brothers, let me tell you what the messenger of God says. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the messenger of God says. And the messenger of God is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. To all black people, he is your messenger. That's why as I speak, you have to bear witness. That as I'm speaking, you say, wait a minute. How come everything this man has said, me can feel it, I may agree with it. Not because I'm clever. Not because I'm anything special. No, I am repeating to you what the messenger of God has taught black people today. We have a man amongst us today who is raising the dead. Brothers and sisters, I want you to hear what the messenger says about the white man here. The messenger says that the white man in America is 99% evil and devil. 95%, is that right? 95. 95% devil in America. He says the white man in England is 100%. 100%. 100%. This is the belly of the beast. Make no mistake. You make a terrible mistake when you think and you laugh at white people here. You make a terrible mistake when you think these people are fools. You make a terrible mistake when you see these boys walking out there and you think they're unarmed. Why do you think they show you Sherlock Holmes? How come Sherlock Holmes could get a gun? He had guns. You think these people are unarmed? You're falling for the hype. Oh, they got a little stick. Or now they got a long-handled one. Really? Oh, you don't know evil until you meet these police. These are the people who set up America. America is the daughter of England. This is the mother country. This is what our parents are told is the mother country. Germany, the fatherland. And America, the daughter. Know where you are. You're in Europe. You're in the sea of white people. This is the place where just across the water, they're killing other white people, calling it ethnic cleansing, and they call you an ethnic minority. And when you go to the etymological root of the word ethnic, it means heathen. And they're getting ready right now to commit genocide on us. Ethnically cleanse us. And they're building up the ante, and they're teaching the whole world about these black savages, yardies, Homegirls, homeboys, fly girls, all of this language. See, because when you go to war, it's easy to kill a gook or a jerry. Very difficult to kill a Vietnamese man or a German man. But a gook and a jerry, easy. A yardy, easy. A ragamuffin, easy. Look how they've got us now, brothers. The white man is so wickedly wise now. You see me now, some of you out there, you're so gone. You say, look upon him, look upon him. Him think him is a white man with him bow tie and suit. 6,000 years ago, when you and I were in Egypt and our civilization was in a decline, coming down from even greater things, in a decline, we were wearing silk, fine garments. We were the first ones to put the silk worm to work to make fine garments. Dressed the white man at the same time in Europe on his all fours, covered in hair, talking about huga, huga, huga. We are not following Caucasians when we dress like this, we're taking back what's ours. But at the same time, they make you think that you're a lawless, crazy people. So they say to you, You're a ragamuffin. And then they open a shop and put torn up clothes in the shop. And you will go in the shop. Hey, yeah, give me that tear up jacket there. You yeah, almost fit. Fifth upon you. Yeah, have that. When you go home, look in your dictionary. Look up ragamuffin. It means tramp. 
Tramps didn't build the pyramids. Tramps didn't perform cataract operations 6,000 years ago on people's retinas. Tramps didn't perform open heart surgery. Tramps didn't circumnavigate the entire universe. When white people thought the earth was flat and if you went too far, you'd fall off the side. Wake up, black man. Stop labeling yourself for genocide. Put away those pop guns. Stop turning them on your brother. And I'm warning you, all of you who are caught up in the drug culture, give it up. I'm telling you, there's a better way to make your money legal. You can earn it, brothers. You've got to work hard, but you've got to come out of this. Because all it is, it's a quick fix. But it's not only quick in terms of driving a BMW today, dead tomorrow. Quick like that. The both ways it works. That's the way it works. And when you're gone, the world moves on. Ain't nobody missing you. Ain't nobody talking about you. Move on. This is the reality. Give it up, brothers. You are in a death trap with that madness. And the brother next to you, who is your partner in crime, he is working for the police. I'm telling you now. I'm warning you, man. Don't you dare make the mistake today of thinking that there's honor among thieves. Any man in here who knows that there's another brother with a gun, that brother who knows that you got that gun, he is going to give you up. He's going to give you up. It's the nature of the beast. I'm telling you, brothers, come out of this. They've put you in a trap. They're going to work you all against one another. That's why when anything goes down in the black community, you hear them, they say it's a small minority of bad ones. It's, 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 it's scientific language. So that you now who think you're in the minority, in the large majority of good ones, will give up those. And the whole thing works like that. And you know, brothers, the amount of times you, you know, you're going to go on the next robbery. You're going to lick on a post office. And the, the, the way we think now, well, I'm going to do one last big job. And then I'm going to legit. This is the dream. It don't work like that, brothers. You've got to be able to show means. You've got to be able to show where you get your money from today. You've got to be able to show that you're a legitimate, upfront man. You've got to learn to drive on the high street, get off the back streets. You've got to learn to go through the, in the building through the front door. No more side doors. You've got to understand who you are. You've got to stop allowing yourself to be set up because the man that you trust in that business with you, when you go and get that next bag of coke from the dealer who is a white man, from the police, the same police who are coming out and arresting another man, they're the same ones who are putting the drugs in the first place. Most of the drugs are coming in through the American air bases, coming in through the military establishment, all at the behest of the government. I want you to hear me well. You think that they can't stop drugs from coming in this country? Look, man, if I wanted some coke now, I can go and get it. And I don't know no dealers to name one in here. But I know that if I want some, I can get some in the next 20 minutes. Simple. You think the devil don't know how to go and get it as well? You think he don't know how to find you? You think you're so smart? You think you're outsmarting him? You think you're on your phone and you're doing all these deals and he don't know what you're doing? He's got you tapped. He's got a file on you, black man. And he's using you. As long as you're out there killing your people, he let you stay out there for a while. Let you stay out there for a while. He knows who the dealers are. He knows. But you see what happens? Let one white girl die of ecstasy. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Let one, black, let one white girl die of ecstasy. And you see the policeman, the father, come on the TV crying. And the whole country is up in arms. And then it goes quiet. Then on the news, three men found in a Land Rover with gunshot wounds to the head. People who are associated with the dealing of ecstasy. The police say there ain't no footprints leading up to the Land Rover. They can see by the configuration of the gunshots that the men weren't shot in the vehicle. They were shot elsewhere and bought there. And it was an assassination, gangland-style killing. Then it all goes quietly again. Then you walk the street and you see a big poster with a smiling little girl who died from ecstasy. And the words say...